This is episode 0039 of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. And today we have Vera and Vitaly who are going to be joining us. Their talent is teaching people how to speak. What I want to disclose from the very beginning to the audience is that I have known these people now for about four years. And they are two of the most dynamic people I have met in the field of public speaking. They've created a school called the Elegance Arena. It was born to assist people to find their public voice and to help them to search for a path to people's hearts and minds through the use of language. Vera is a Toastmaster who has earned the highest award which is called the DTM, Distinguished Toastmaster. She's a Triple Crown Award, and she also has a second place win in the European level evaluation contest. She has a PhD in psychology, and in her earlier days, she was a professional swimmer, and she has earned many titles, including champion of Ukraine. Now, Vitaly is also a distinguished Toastmaster. He's a Triple Crown Award winner. He's won thir third place in the District European Level International Speech Contest. He has a master's in engineering, and in his earlier days, he was basically a bookworm. He read everything he could get his hands on. Any platform in the world is a platform they welcome. They're willing to stand up and speak. They're constantly honing their skills, and part of honing their skills is giving to the audience and to their students, the best of their talents, their insight and their skills. They have such a vast knowledge in their experience that what they're wanting to help people to achieve in the 21st century is to become skilled, competent communicators for their own success and happiness. So I welcome you both to the show, Vera and Vitaly. It's a pleasure to be here, Gary. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. So let me ask you, what's the one thing you wish you had known before you became online entrepreneurs? First of all, let me thank you for inviting us here. It's indeed a great pleasure, the greatest pleasure to be a guest in your podcast. As for your question, you know, there are a lot of things that we had learned since the very beginning. But if we need to choose one particular, perhaps it would be the fact that there could be not just let me say it correctly. It couldn't be much of a PR. You can always make more PR. You know, at the very beginning, I thought that making one post per day is not only sufficient, but it could be annoying for people that one post per day is top, you don't need to make more. But since then, since the very beginning, since the opening of our school, I've realized that PR is not a one-dimensional field. It's not only making one post. It's not only creating posts in a row. It's PR is the multi-dimensional field and you need to operate in different directions. For instance, you have your business page, the, the page of your school, for instance, and you need to make, create interesting content from that page. You have your personal page in Facebook, in Instagram, in different social medias, and you need to promote yourself as a brand also. You need to think about promotion in social media and in other media. You need to think about communication with different people. Because while communicating with people and while being open and transparent about your business, you can deliver the information about values that your school brings to the community. And also, the happy, satisfied customers are the best promotion. So if you want to have a good PR, you just need to work hard to get those satisfied customers. Because as we figured out, one post from a happy customer can mean much more than dozens of your own posts from different pages. So if you think that you are doing a lot of PR, just think again, perhaps you're mistaken. Yes, and it's also very important 
a very important thing that I wish I would have known before. I always considered social media being electronic, an electronic thing. From the engineering point of view, I thought that I could analyze it, that I could figure it out, check the patterns, follow the patterns, and everything will be very good, will be brilliant. And unfortunately for me, I wish I, had a, I would have known that social media is not a technical thing. It's more of a flow. It's not a science. It's not science, definitely. It's more of an, of an art. It's like fashion. There are certain rules which are obligatory to follow, yes, but you need to feel the flow. You need to feel the trend and you need to be in this trend. This is not about mathematical calculations. It's about the gut feeling and about intuition. And since I try to dig into social media, since that time, I figured out that it seems that I don't have a gut feeling in this, in this field. That's why I delegated everything related to social, to social media to my partner in crime. She's doing, she's doing most of the job. I'm just- It's yeah. not true. <laughs> We're doing that together. Vitaly is just too shy to acknowledge it. Oh, to be, to be honest, to, to be frank, yes, we're doing it together, but I always rely on the gut feeling, on the intuition of Vera, because, well, she has it. it, it frankly speaking, I always rely on Vitaly's feeling, because when I write a post, it's a really often situation when I come to Vitaly and say, just look at this post, tell me what, what you think, how our listeners will react to this. So it's a cooperation between my gut feeling and Vitaly's intellect. <laughs> but you know, I think collaboration is the key to success in the 21st century. Not everybody has all the talents within themselves. And so we go to other people to, to achieve that. And ladies and gentlemen, listening audience, you just received a whole bucket full of golden nuggets in that first answer that we received. And I hope you've got another bucket because we're just beginning. This is so full of the clues of success. So let me ask you, you know, there's things that you plan to do that just don't turn out as well as you thought they might. And sometimes are absolute flops. What is perhaps the largest mistake that's happened along your way? The outcome wasn't the way you wanted it. And what did you learn from it? Thank you very much for that question. Indeed, there is a story and it still hurts, although it happened two years ago. It's still a nightmare. It was the first promo meeting of our school. We have launched a massive PR campaign before it. For several months, we've posted teasers, we've posted photos. We made a photo shoot specifically for this, for this event. And we've PR'd it so much and we received a lot of interesting, a lot of people who were interested and they've signed up for this meeting. And we rented Marvelous Conference Room in a business center. And it was so important for us. It was so well planned. It was so well rehearsed. We've written a script. We've planned everything <laughs> till the last dot. And then the day comes, the day comes and we come to this conference room and we start the same day we start receiving messages from people i'm sorry i won't be able to, to attend sorry urgent business to attend to sorry my car broke down and and we're we're a bit in a, a bit of a panic and we start inviting people who come and people who come down mostly our friends not mostly there were <laughs> only our friends no there were a couple of people yeah uh, a, a couple. couple a couple of people who were not our close friends but just came from the street, only a couple, just a few. And we, we invite everybody in and they sit and we understand that we are performing in front of the audience that knows us. That there are one or two people who doesn't know us. Everybody knows and they're our close friends. They came to support us. And this is, it's, it, was, it was a hard blow because we were expecting a lot of people to come who were interested. And we got a full room of people who came there to support us, but actually were not potential customers. They weren't interested in this. Yeah, so and it, it was really a hard blow. 
the, the biggest failure perhaps was the moment when they started introducing themselves one by one and every each and every person in the room said that we came to support you and yeah it it was really nice it was we we appreciate a lot their support but that's not what one hopes for when he starts a business so that was a very awkward moment for us but the most the more even more awkward moment was that we rented a beautiful room beautiful conference room but we didn't know that the same day the next room other public speaking school is having their promo meeting and that was that was a situation because that public speaking school they were on the market much longer than we are and we they had the resources to hire a host who was greeting and inviting people to the room to the other room of course that was a fun fact because that host managed to invite a few of our close friends <laughs> to the other room and they sat there for a few minutes realizing what's going on and where are the friends <laughs> Now we can smile at this situation, but at that moment, we really consider that a failure. But indeed, we've learned a few things from that moment. First, there could be 100%, there could be 100 people who registered for your event, and only 40 or 50 will come. So that is a proportion. And during all our further ev events, we've noticed that this proportion still works. Because people have urgent matters, people have work, people have some, I don't know, matter to attend to, some stuff to do. And sometimes they just refuse to come in the last second, not because they don't want to, but just because they are very, very busy. So that's the first thing. You do not consider all people who registered that they will come. And the second thing, whenever you plan something, check the rooms that, near, that are nearby, because if you're renting a conference room and in the next conference room, you have your competition, which is, which has more experience, which has more resources then well, you might be in trouble for that. So check the room. It's better to have something secluded or you check the, the schedule of this room or the other's room. Just ask the hostess if they're having any other events related to the matter of business, which you have. Because it might be, it was not awkward for us, no. We, we managed, we talked to the guys, everything went smoothly and peacefully. But still, people come, and when they have a real choice, they step out of the elevator and they see two rooms, one says public school, the other says public <laughs> school, it creates a confusion for people. Try to avoid that. Yeah, and the last point is that the support of your friends and relatives is incredibly important when you're starting the business. So just tell your friends, tell your relatives that you are doing something new and feel the warmth and support of their hearts. Believe me, it's something incredible. Well, thank you for that. It, I, I will tell you, I had a, a, a podcast with a lady, Elizabeth Papaloni who told me that her first four events, she had food, she had a room, she had somebody to check people in and nobody came. So you did better than Elizabeth. She said, I learned a few things in that time period about how you get people committed to come to the actual event that they say they're coming to. <laughs> she told me off camera about how she was bringing homeless people in off the streets to eat the food. <laughs> Yeah. And she says, I think by doing that is what opened the universe to say, okay, I'm a giver. Absolutely. More people showing up. And she says that I've never looked back since it's, it's just been business, but that's all part of business. We learn these things. Golden nuggets, folks. Hope you heard them all. What advice would you give to people who want to be in business, especially along the lines of using social media? Because that's where I think you guys are really smashing it. Thank you. Well, first advice that we would like to give is to make sure that you love what you're doing. It is extremely important. It is the keystone because if you don't like what you're doing, if you don't love, not like, if you just like what you're doing, after some period of time, you will be exhausted. There will be a lot of things to do. You will be tired. You will receive negative feedback. You will receive a lot of things that you don't like. 
If you just like the things that you do, your hands will drop down and you will say, okay, you'll give up. You must love. You must burn with passion about what you're doing. And only in this case, you will be able to proceed. Because even if you love, if you adore your business, your, the, the things that you, your giving process, if you adore it, still it will be hard. Because we're all people, we get tired. And sometimes we don't have enough inner resources to continue. But we must because we have obligations. We make promises. We say people that we can do something. We can help them. You must oblige. So love what you do. Make sure that you love. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Other advice, very practical advice, would be to check the market before entering the market. So you need to analyze the market. If there is a place for one more player, if there is a place for you. And also you need to check if your product, what you are offering people, is, has, has some unique feature. Of course, you nowadays there are so many choices and products. You can't create something completely unique. But just make sure that your product has a unique part, something that will attract attention of the audience and of your potential customers. And also, it is very important to continue monitoring market, let me say, on a regular basis. You need to be in trend. You need to understand what people want, what are their needs, what are their dreams. And if you are analyzing the market, analyzing people's needs, you can adjust your product so that it would correspond to what people really want and what they would like to have in their life. And also one more very important advice. Try to grasp every opportunity that comes your way. It is easier said than done, but just try to say yes to different projects. And sometimes they might be completely unrelated to what you're doing. For example, we have public speaking school. We teach people to communicate. And suddenly we receive an offer to come and talk to children, to children who want to develop. And it's the, they want to be entrepreneurs. They're still in school. They're still studying. But the group of activists gathered sponsors and they are asking these children to deliver their messages, to deliver their business plans. And the most successful ones get sponsorship from big businessmen. And they say, please come there. Maybe you could talk to these children. Maybe you could help them to deliver their business projects better. Maybe you could establish cooperation with some of them. And from the first, from the first sight, how is it related to us? But if you look deeper, we, we went to such, a, such an event. It was incredible. These children, it is 20 minutes for 20 minutes we talked mm. to them. These are very memorable 20 minutes of our lives. They're bright, they are enthusiastic, they, they want to make business, they want to develop. They want to do something, they want to create things. And it is just amazing. So don't, don't waste opportunities, snatch them. You don't know where this opportunity will lead you in the future because we have made very, very interesting acquaintances at such a gathering among children and among adults. Yeah, and we're not talking about new customers that were there. We are talking about, rather about motivation that you receive from those children. It's, it's incredible. You know, we've been there a year and a half ago or something like that, but I still feel the atmosphere of people, of children, wanting to develop themselves, wanting to create something new and wanting to make this world better. So it's incredible. Just to grab every opportunity you have and believe me, somehow it, it will help your life. So to summarize, first advice is to love what you do. Mandatory, love what you do. Second advice is to monitor the market on a regular basis. And third, to grab every opportunity the life pops up in front of you. One of my recent guests, E.A. Sokovitz, has a philosophy that people who are givers never diminish themselves, even if the people is just 
that they're dealing with is just a taker. And when you are giving and you're giving real value to people, it comes back to you in other ways. And that's the way the universe works. The taker will just take, and it's all about me, 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 me. And in the end, they lose out. But what you've done with these children, with the golden nuggets that you're throwing out right now to the audience, you're really giving huge amounts of value. So let me ask you this, Vera Vitale, what, what have been the big influences in your life? What, what has helped you become who you are now and led you into helping the world as you are doing it? First of all, I must mention my partner in crime, Vera, because without her, there would be no school. Most... I can tell. I can tell the same about Vitaly, and I'm interrupting you because you're. You will start, you know, to throw relax. compliments relax. at me. Relax. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. I'll rephrase it. We are the influences to each other because only in combination we can give maximum of what we have. Separated, we are effective, yes. But together, we create a more significant force. The second, the second would be probably um, Elon Musk. It's not a surprise for many people, but Elon is taking this second place not because, not because he managed to build a multi-billion enterprise, not because he managed to get Tesla in the space and it's flying somewhere right now, not because he plans to reach Mars in the nearest future. No, he's taking this place because he never gives up, like never. You probably remember that last situation when he was presenting a car with unbreakable windows and he threw a stone to the unbreakable window and he broke an unbreakable window. It was a failure, in my opinion. But even in that situation, he managed not only not to give up, he managed to uplift the spirits of his employees. I know I read an article about that situation. People say that he gathered all his employees in one place and he gave such a motivational speech to them that they wanted to start working with even more force, even harder. So Elon Musk is taking the second place for never giving up. Yes, and I must add here, I try not to make an idol out of anybody. So I don't have a lot of role models. It's rather some traits of characters that I want to have in myself. So for me, it's from Sir Winston Churchill who said, never give in, never give in, never, 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 in nothing and till Elon Musk. So all these people, they had one trait in common and it's willingness to continue. And the third, probably the, the third, it's not a person, it's rather a people. couple, a couple of <laughs> people. It's you, Gary and, and Marina, Marina, because you're always trying to do something. You're never stopping. And it fits the second, this trait of never give in you're doing, you're achieving something new, you're working on something, you're getting more knowledge. You and Marina, you present a couple of people who are working, who are relentlessly doing something. And it's not something like I just do, I, I just poke in my garden and, and I, that's all. No, you're working towards the goal. You're trying to make other people's life, lives better. And that's, that's really influenced us. I'm quite certain that I speak for two, for both of us. Definitely. It influenced us a lot. You so, are the people with steel character who are hard workers and at the same time who managed to keep their inner positive. It's a unique combination of features and of the character. So you are, you and Marina are, are the example for us and the people whom we would like to be similar to. I'm blushing. Thank you so much. That's very kind words. You know, we, we've only got a few minutes left. I want to know how people best contact you. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to put this information in the show notes along with their biographies. Don't stop your car to try to write it down right now, but go ahead. Tell, tell us how, best way to contact you. Best way to reach us, to reach out to us is by via Facebook or via Instagram. 
social media. We're always there. We monitor the situation. Vera here does a perfectly good job. So just send us a message, add us to friends, whatever. We'll get in touch. It's quite easy nowadays. Thank God. I, I will testify to the fact that I have never had to wait more than an hour or two from whenever I write anything before somebody comments back. <laughs> and I wonder, do these people ever sleep? <laughs> but that's, that's, that's life. So what, one of the things that I think it's very interesting, the things that you talked about and what's come to my mind right now, and I don't want to belabor the points, but you say never give up, keep your vision, stay focused on what you're going for, and have discernment over opportunities that will enhance what you're doing versus chasing some other shiny object. You know, there's, there's so many people who get in with the idea that I'm going to do this. And then they look across the street because somebody says, look over there. And they say, Oh, maybe I should do that. And they leave this project and all the energy that they have put into it to the universe to go do something else. So they lose all of this trying to do that. Want, want to kind of ask just for a quick answer is what is the source of your ability to discern between what enhances us versus chasing a shiny object? That, that's a very nice question. I think that the source is the inner feeling. It's the inner voice that tells you, do I want it or not? And if, to be very brief, if you feel that this desire to change the field, to change something. You just need to take a moment, a moment, an hour, a day, two days, sitting still, meditating, thinking, waiting the options. And if your inner voice after this period of time when you're, when you're just being silent, tells you, yes, I want to move. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to move further. I want, want to move. I want to do something else. Just listen to the voice and follow your inner voice. It will lead you to the good places and good things if you listen carefully and understand correctly. I really appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a ton of gold right there. Get another chuck. Pull it in because you're going to have tons of chuck in a moment. Now, hallmark of the show is I give people two minutes uninterrupted to say whatever they want. I'm not going to interrupt you. You can say whatever's on your heart. You can do it separately, two minutes, or you can do it combined it's, you know, for four, however you want to do it. The time is now yours. I would like to tell all generation that nothing is impossible. I know that that's, that's a very, very popular phrase now, but it's true for me and it's what I feel. Nothing is impossible. Whatever direction you choose, whatever you'd like to do, you can achieve this. And believe me, with the hard work, the results can be amazing and unbelievable. Either you want to fight the fear of public speaking, or you want to run, complete the Ironman race to finish it. You can definitely do this. And yes, it means taking strikes and blows on your way to glory. It definitely means hard work. It means failing from time to time. But the happiness you can receive in the end is definitely worth it. So continue working, believe in yourself and you'll get to the top of your happiness. Don't forget about balance. Future generations, people all over the world, we hear, nowadays we hear this word very often, balance, you need to be balanced. Your life must be balanced. And all people who talk about balance Mostly, they never felt it. It's very hard. It's incredibly hard to find this balance. Find this golden line that you have between your job, your hobbies, between your relationships, between, relationships, between your friendship, and all of this combined. And you need to find proper limitations. You need to, sometimes you need to say no. Sometimes you need to say yes. And it's very hard to discern what is the typical, what is the situation right now you have at your hands. So the most important thing, balance. Find your comfortable zone. Work hard, but don't forget to get rest. Play, be a professional. Yes, 
but don't you ever forget that you're also a human being. You're a child. Sometimes you need to relax and play. Sometimes you need to be very confident. Sometimes you can say, okay, I've done everything I can. Now let the universe decide, should it happen or not? Sometimes you need to be very logical, but don't forget about your emotions. Empathize with people. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, balance, harmony is about your feelings, about your feelings of happiness. If you're happy, probably you found that precious balance. You guys are so full of wisdom. I really appreciate what you've had to say. I would just like to remark to the ladies and gentlemen in the audience that Vera Vitali are two of the most approachable people I've ever come to. I know a lot of people, they think like, well, I just not so sure I should contact them on social media. Please do. They're just two of the most genuinely nice people that I've ever come across. Their school's in Kiev. I know not everybody goes, lives close to Kiev, but they are as close as social media. And in this day and age when we have community in the online world, where we have uh, collaboration in the online world, where people are generous with their successes and would like to try to help everybody else to achieve that same success. Please, if you, if you feel inclined, if you want to just even say hi, just do it. These people are really wonderful. Now, that has to be the end of this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you both for being here. You have greatly enhanced everything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you... Thank you for inviting us because it was indeed a great pleasure to be here. It's a wonderful, the... wonderful podcast you're having and we and... wish you to continue to keep up, to do more, to mine more gold for people all over the world. Well, I can only do that when the guests are willing to share because success leaves clues. And I'm just having, letting the people find those clues along the way as you spill them out in conversation. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like the podcast, please subscribe. If you have really felt that, boy, I know somebody who could hear this and benefit from it, please share the podcast. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Gary at Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets wishing you the best day ever. Thank you. Thanks.